This is BBC Two. Welcome to the Learning Zone. Coming up in just a moment, FETV. Then at four, it's the languages sequence introducing Spanish. Then at five o'clock, it's the business and work strand, followed at six by the Open University. Next on the learning zone, FETV and the changing world of work. The first program this morning looks at some of the ways employees are sacked in thank you and goodbye. Well, thank you very much for coming to DBM's separation interview training. Uh, it's nice to see you all here. Now, telling somebody that they are being made redundant is never an easy thing to do. And you need to plan it to the nth degree to make sure it goes as smoothly as possible. We have a lot of horror stories about how this can be done very badly. And uh, one that I heard was that somebody came out of it thinking they'd been promoted. Right. <laughs> It was very traditional, very Victorian. It was the tailcoats, the white gloves, the red carnation, the full Monty for me. I started as a barman, and suddenly there I was managing this top London hotel. I, I was in, you know, seventh heaven, really. It was utopia for me. I thought, I've arrived, you know, this is it, this is it for me, yeah. You think, I've got this far, I'm not gonna go back now. You know, I, I didn't intend to go back and work in Leicester or, um, you know, Milton Keynes or somewhere obscure like that. I thought, I can only go up from this, you know, that's what I wanted and that's what I thought I would get, you know. When I um, had been in the position about three and a half weeks, my manager called me down to the office and said, you are going to have to restructure the rotor because we are bringing in flexible rostering and I don't want X, Y, Z and he named them in the restaurant. He said, we're changing the image and we need, you know, bright, bubbly, sort of young personalities. Um, it took me a while to comprehend what he meant. I didn't know whether he meant he wanted them moved around something else or whatever, but basically what he wanted was for me to remove them. Okay, Simon. Some of the strategies that we actually used were amazing. Like, I was told to give them less tips. And they know that, you know, they could get 40, 50 pounds, and I used to give them seven pounds and stuff like that. Uh, just really, I suppose, to pee them off, to be honest. And then they would, you know, like, complain. And if they complained, where could they go? And on top of everything else, they'd have to clean everything. And if they didn't clean it, then you could give them a warning for it. But they might be exceptionally busy. I mean, I felt awful having to call these people over because in your heart of hearts, you knew that they couldn't do this work. So there's only one way out, and that's to watch them squeal until they give in, and, you know, that's the end for them. The company was formed in 1983 by two Americans. What they manufactured was boxes, basically, that allowed computers, PCs on people's desks to communicate to one another. It was basically a work hard, play hard sort of company, and it was more or less a lifestyle. You know, you, you just spent most of your time working with the company, and it spilled over into your social life, into your weekends, and nobody really begrudged that. There were five people sent over from the corporate office in the States. We were never told why they came over. They just appeared uh, one Monday morning. Nobody was actually um, told uh, about the team coming over from the States, but everybody knew. It, it just seemed to, to leak around the company. They went through each member of my department and said, what does this person do and why do they do it and why were they there and how long had they been there and what did I think of them? The um, travel lady was called in, asked who abuses the travel policy. And when asked, you know, when she said she wouldn't give a name, then they said, well, we'll sit here until you do give a name. 
they actually asked me to pick out three individuals across the company who I thought should be terminated. And, um, and that they got um, quite upset when I actually refused to give any names. You go and answer the door and it would be one of the Americans and it's just like, oh, oh, hello.